Let's see how the Hadamard gate allows us to move between the Pauli Z eigenbasis and the Pauli X eigenbasis. The Hadamard gate is an operator that acts on qubit states. These are states that are part of a two-dimensional Hilbert space. Let's begin by defining the Hadamard gate. We can denote the Hadamard gate by capital H. Now, there is some confusion here because capital H is also used to denote the Hamiltonian in quantum mechanics, and H is also used to denote Hilbert spaces. So the same letter is used to denote these very different concepts. But in this context over here, we are denoting the Hadamard gate with the capital letter H. And we can define this in terms of Pauli matrices. This is 1 over the square root of 2 times the sum of Pauli x and Pauli z. So these are the familiar Pauli matrices. And over here we have a normalization coefficient. And we'll see why this coefficient uh, is needed in the definition. Because it makes uh, a lot of the equations and relationships later much more convenient. It gets rid of annoying uh, factors out the front. We can also write this in Dirac notation. And I'll do that over here. This is equal to the same normalization coefficient. And then we have a bunch of ket bra combinations. So first, I'll write down the 0, 0 ket bra. Then I'll write down the 0, 1 ket bra. And then the 1, 0 ket bra. And finally, I'll write down minus the 1, 1 ket bra. And I'll close the brackets over here. These middle two actually came from the Pauli x operator. So the Pauli x operator is defined as the sum of these middle two operators. If we were to put this in a matrix representation, these would correspond to the off diagonal entries. So the, uh, the non-leading diagonal entries, they would correspond to these two uh, values over here. And when we have a ket bra combination, that gives us an operator. Now, what about this combination and this combination over here? Together, this combination and this combination, they are diagonal entries. And we can see a plus one over here and a minus one implicitly as the coefficients of these ket bra combinations. So these are diagonal elements if we put this in a matrix representation. So this would correspond to a diagonal matrix that has entries one and minus one. And that is the Pauli Z. So those two ket bra combinations come from the Pauli Z. And if we take the sum and then divide by this normalization factor, then we get the Hadamard gate. Now let's see the matrix representation and how it acts on a general qubit state. So we're going to take the Hadamard gate and we're going to act on a ket labeled by psi. So this is some general qubit state. And in matrix representation, we're going to have 1 over square root of 2. That's the same normalization factor. And then we're going to have the matrix. And the matrix has diagonal entries, 1 and minus 1. That's this and this over here. And off diagonal entries, they are also 1 and 1. So this is the matrix that represents this operator. And this Hadamard gate has this specific matrix representation. And let's act on a general state, and we'll use the coefficients alpha and beta to denote the coefficients of the computational basis states. So this alpha is the coefficient that multiplies the zero ket, so it's the ket labeled by zero, and beta multiplies the ket labeled by one. And together, they form the computational basis. We only need two computational basis vectors because this is a two-dimensional Hilbert space. The Hadamard gate over here acts on a two-dimensional uh, Hilbert space. And specifically, it's acting on a qubit state. So alpha and beta also have to satisfy the normalization condition. And we impose the normalization condition to uh, get rid of any of those annoying factors that would appear at the front of relationships. That's also the reason we have this coefficient at the front over here. 
It is to preserve normalization. So let's see what we get when we actually perform this matrix multiplication. We're still going to have this factor out the front, but on the inside, we're going to get alpha plus beta, and then we're going to get alpha minus beta. Those are the two entries. So you can see that this alpha has now turned into a sum, and this beta has now turned into a difference of the coefficients. And there is another way we can actually write this. We can write this in an alternative way. And I'll write that underneath over here. So what is this actually telling us? It's telling us that if we take this state over here, which is uh, the ground state or the state labeled by zero, and we act with the Hadamard gate, that's going to give us one on the square root of two times the sum of this computational basis state and the computational basis state labeled by one. And this is the same as plus, the ket labeled as plus. So this is shorthand notation for this combination. And for the other computational basis state, which is labeled by one, we have this combination, which is the difference rather than the sum. So we have a minus sign on the state labeled by one. And we can call this minus over here. These two states are the eigenstates of the Pauli X operator. They have eigenvalue plus one and minus one respectively. So if you took this Pauli X operator and you acted on these states, you would get back the same state with an eigenvalue of plus or minus one. And these computational basis states, they are the eigenbasis of the Pauli Z operator. So that's this Pauli Z operator. So the Hadamard gate has changed these Pauli Z eigenstates to Pauli X eigenstates. Let's see what it does when we act on these two states. So I'll write that down over here. If we take this Hadamard gate and we act on either the plus or the minus, for a general, I'll write this out generally, so we'll have plus and minus inside here. So we, we take this ket and we act on it. What is that going to give us? Well, if we write this out in matrix form, we're going to have this same matrix. So 1, 1, 1, minus 1. And it's going to act on these two states. And let's, let's write these states in their matrix representations. So we're going to have another factor of square root 1 on square root of 2. That comes from there. And then we're going to have 1 as our first entry. That represents this 0 state, or this state labeled by 0. And then the next state is going to be plus or minus 1. And this sign depends on whether we're dealing with the plus or the minus version of this ket. So all of these uh, labels in the kets, they are just labels. We could put any symbol in there as long as we're consistent. So this 0 and this 1, they're just labels for the two possible states in the computational basis. So this is what we get. And if we multiply this out, what are we going to get? Well, this factor and this factor can be combined together. We're free to move constants uh, around because they satisfy commutativity. They are real numbers. And so that's going to give us 1 half. And over here, what we're going to get is 1 times 1 plus 1 times plus or minus 1. So we're going to have 1 plus minus 1. But when we perform this other multiplication, we have this minus sign here. And this minus sign is going to flip this plus minus sign. And it's going to turn it into a minus plus sign. So this is what we're going to get. And we can write this out slightly differently. So this is a general uh, equation that works for both plus and minus. But if we separate this out into the two cases, what happens is if we act with h on this plus state, we're going to get the zero state. Now, where is that coming from? Well, if you look at this case, if we just focus on plus and we treat, treat this over here as a plus, that's going to give us 1 plus 1, which is 2. We divide that by 2, that gives us 1. And over here, we're going to use this minus, and we're going to have 1 minus 1, which is 0. So then the matrix that we get is a column vector that has entries 1, 0. And 1, 0, that column vector, that is the matrix representation of this ket in the Pali Z eigenbasis. So that's what we're dealing with here. And if we act with the Hadamard 
on the minus case, so in this minus cat, then what we're going to get is 1. We're going to get the cat labeled by 1. And we'll go through that case. If instead we had a minus over here, then we would choose this minus. We'd have 1 minus 1. That would be 0 in the top. And over here we would choose the plus. That would give us 1 plus 1. That's 2 divided by 2. And we have 1. So then we would have the entries 0, 1 in this column vector. And that is the matrix representation of this cat. So you can see that we are moving from the Pauli Z eigenbasis to the Pauli X eigenbasis. And over here, we're moving from the Pauli X eigenbasis to the Pauli Z eigenbasis. The Hadamard gate allows us to shift between these two eigenbases. So now what I want to do is examine another way of writing this. Instead of writing it in this form, we could actually sandwich the operator in between two Hadamards. Because the Hadamard gate is Hermitian, the Hadamard gate satisfies this property. It is Hermitian. So let's go ahead and uh, sandwich uh, Pali X and Pali Z between Hadamards. So if we do that, then what we're going to get is H X H equals Z. Now this H and this H are exactly the same. We could put a, a Hermitian adjoint on either one of these and that would give us the exact same result. So this is how you would transform this operator. We're transforming this operator with this unitary transformation. We're treating the Hadamard gate as a unitary transformation that allows us to go from Pali X to Pali Z. Now what I want to do is write a slightly different form of this equation. I'm going to act on both sides from the left and from the right with the inverse, which is the same. It's the same as the Hadamard gate. And if I do that, I'll show you what I get. If I get, if I take h dagger h, and then I put x in the middle, and then I put h over here, and then follow that with h dagger, the right-hand side is going to turn into h dagger z h dagger. And this combination over here is the same as the identity. And this combination is also the same as the identity. That's because the Hadamard gate satisfies another very useful property, where h squared, which is h dagger h, and that's also equal to h h dagger, this is equal to the identity. So the Hadamard gate also satisfies this property, and it is also Hermitian. So now what we can do is we can also identify that this is equal to the Hadamard gate, and this is equal to the Hadamard gate. So then finally, what we see is that we get an analogous relationship where these guys disappear because it's just the identity, and then we sandwich Z. So that gives us this relationship, where we have H, Z, H equals X. So it's an analogous relationship. If you sandwich either Pali X or Pali Z in between two Adamards, they will swap places. So the Z will turn to an X, or the X will turn to a Z. Now, this property over here is also very useful. And we will prove this property in the next video in the quantum mechanics playlist. This property over here, the fact that the Hadamard gate is Hermitian, is immediately evident if you look at the matrix representation. If you perform the Hermitian adjoint on this, you'll see that taking the transpose has no effect because this is a symmetric matrix. And taking the complex conjugate also has no effect because all entries in this matrix are real numbers. And the Hermitian conjugate of a real number is just itself. So over here, we can immediately see that it is Hermitian. We can also see that it's Hermitian if we examine all of these guys over here. If we were to take the Hermitian adjoint of all of the ket bra combinations, we would get back exactly the same combination. And if we look at this definition over here, we know that Pauli X and Pauli Z are both Hermitian. The Pauli matrices are all Hermitian. So if we take the Hermitian adjoint of these two matrices, we're going to get back exactly the same thing. So in the next video in the quantum mechanics playlist, we're going to keep looking at the Hadamard gate. And we're going to see some other interesting properties that the Hadamard gate has. In this video, we've examined the Pauli X and Pauli Z eigenbases. And we've seen how the Hadamard gate allows us to translate between these two useful bases. And this is essential mathematics for describing 
a two-dimensional Hilbert space. And that is the system that describes a qubit, a single qubit by itself. You can find all the other videos in the quantum mechanics playlist if you click over here.